Hey, my name is Melinda Ruffle, and I am obsessed with telling the stories of women involved in motorsport, young and older, from all walks of life, currently involved in a wide range of roles or sharing their stories from the past. I'm a wife, mother of four adult children, and a mama of 16. In 2017, I was searching social media for a group dedicated to women in motorsports. When I didn't find what I was looking for, I posted a message to a few racing pages to see if any women would like to connect with me. And now I have thousands of women and men who are part of the Women's Motorsports Network. As crew chief of the only media company dedicated to women in motorsports, I work from wherever my travels take me, publishing this podcast, the Women's Motorsports Network News Online Magazine, and Let's Talk Racing Live, my social media show. You will hear from women who share their stories from the grid of life, how they manage the messy and memorable moments of family, work, and racing. You will hear their tried and true secrets of success and many other topics like friendships, family, hardships, and heroes that women deal with to balance the seasons of life. So grab your favorite beverage, pull up a seat, Make sure you are comfy and get ready to be inspired and encouraged from the stories on the Women's Motorsports Network podcast. Hello, everyone. This is Melinda Russell with the Women's Motorsports Network. And my guest today is Shelly Greenwald. Shelly is um, involved with Slinger Speedway. And if you haven't heard of Slinger Speedway, where the heck have you been? Slinger is a well-known track in Wisconsin. It is known for its great racing. It's known for um, the people that work there and go there. And so I'm excited to have Shelly on today. I actually have been to Slinger Speedway, so we'll get into that a little bit more later, Shelly. But first, I'd like to welcome you to the show, and I'd like you to start by just sharing with us a little bit about yourself, where you live, what you do, your family, your pets, anything that you'd like to share. Okay. Well, thank you very much for having me. Um, Again, like I said, my name is Shelly Greenwald. I'm currently the safety director at Slinger Speedway. Um, that's my, my, my fun job. I like to call it my hobby. I get paid for, uh, my full-time job though. I work as a registered nurse at St. Luke's hospital here in Milwaukee, uh, in the emergency department. Um, I've been doing that for just about a year now. Previous prior to that, I worked part-time as a firefighter paramedic for about 14 or 15 years, um, in my hometown of Sussex, Wisconsin. And I was a Lieutenant there. Um, when I left and decided it was time to move on to some other things. Um, But back in uh, 2006, I got into the racing side of safety stuff. Um, And so I'll talk about that a little bit more. But I I live with my boyfriend, Michael, in in Greenfield. And um, one of our passions we share together is racing. Um, He drag races. And so that's a different type of racing than I'm used to. But I've learned a lot from him awesome so yeah. you probably drag him to slinger and he drags you to the to the drag strip would that yep. be right yep we've kind <laughs> yeah, of introduced sure. each other to our different styles of racing and i've taught him a lot about circle track racing and i've learned a lot about drag racing the last few years so it's fun though to try something it is different fun. and learn different things yeah it is fun. And, you know, it may be a different direction than that you're racing against somebody in different rules, totally different kinds of cars. But all in all, we're all race fans and, and we all love racing, whatever kind it is. So you do have something very much in common for sure. Yeah. So so you were a paramedic for 14 or 15 years. I bet there's um, a lot of stories you could tell as far oh, as yeah. that part goes. And then you jumped into the ER, and that yep. has to be, um, can be a crazy place to work, I would think. Yep, it's, it's, that's one of the things I like about it. It's the same with the working at the racetrack, too. It's, it's never the same thing every day. You know, you generally right. know what you're getting into when you go into work or when you show up at the track, but you always got to be on your toes and always got to be yeah. ready for, you never know what's going to happen or what's going to walk through the doors. 
Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about, first about, it, were, were you into racing prior to your boyfriend? Or how did you get introduced to become part of the safety per people at Slinger Speedway? So my background started with, you know, when I, for as long as I can remember when I was a little kid, my dad raced. Um, never anything super big and fancy, but he raced the Enduros at Slinger. He did figure eight racing, had lots of friends that were into it. And then when I was probably about five or six, he got me into go-kart racing. So I raced go-karts for probably about four or five years um, and then kind of got out of that. Um, but that's kind of where my background comes from. I'm used to the race car being in the garage and, you know, used to the work and time that goes into it. And that was a big thing when I took over my job was I understand what you guys do every week. I understand that how much time and effort you put into these cars and put into coming to race here every week, that that's something I understand, you know? Right. And, and that's a good thing because, you know, um, First of all, hopefully you never have to really use your nursing skills very much at the track. But as far as being in charge of safety and that, you understand that um, safety has to be number one. Um, they don't want to wreck their cars. They don't want to get hurt. They don't want to hurt anybody else. But um, really, that's the number one thing that most tracks that I know of consider is that is is the equipment they have to wear safe and all those things. So why don't you talk a little bit about uh, Slinger and, and their safety program and kind of what you do there. Yeah, so I started on, on Slinger safety team in 2010. Um, I also work at the Milwaukee Mile too on their safety team and I started that back in about 2007, 2008. So I had a few years of experience there um, and I was interested in getting into Slinger. I consider that like my home track, so to speak, and um, kind of reached out to some people and they were kind of like, well, the team's kind of full right now. I don't know if we need anybody, but I had a, you know, a friend of a friend put in a good word for me and I started out working there, um, just kind of volunteering my time. Like I wasn't really, I would only get paid if there was like an open spot to get paid, but I kind of, you know, was a sponge. I absorbed everything and learned from there as things went on. And um, in 2021, then I was um, our previous safety director um, retired. Um, he was just just time to retire, time to move on. And um, he still comes back to help out time to time. But I was asked then to be the safety director after that. And um, I was nervous. I was nervous to be a female to be in that position that I wasn't going to have respect from, you know, drivers, crews, even some of our other officials. Um, John was our safety director that retired and he had all the faith in the world in me. And I take credit for that too. And, or uh, give him credit for that. And same as our track owner, Todd and his wife, Elizabeth, they're like, you got this, you can handle it. And um, it, it hasn't been a problem. It's, I am very happy to have the support I do from, um, drivers and our track owner and everybody around that doesn't doubt me for being a female, that I can do the job just like everybody else did it. Well, that's good. That's good to know. And, you know, as times have, have changed, those positions are more accepted than they would have been even five years ago. But um, you still have some of the old boy mentality at some tracks Yep. And um, we love the fact that women are taking on leadership roles in all kinds of ways at the racetrack. So what is your, you know, what would your job be? What are you in charge of both during the season and then I'm sure in the off season as well? Yeah, so um, our opener is coming up on the 21st. So we um, have meetings once a month all throughout the season about prepping things and getting ready and what we have to do. Um, right now, this off season, we've been working a lot on, um, you know, making sure we have our equipment squared away for the season. Um, we've got a safety truck and a, a, a UTV. Uh, so we have to make sure, you know, everything is good to go on there. Um, we get our extrication equipment. We work with TNT Rescue at Ashapin, Wisconsin here. They um, provide us with some extrication tools to use every year. So we pick all that stuff up, get it ready to go. 
Um, obviously with our cold weather here in Wisconsin, anything, our pumps and everything like that that have water and we winterize them over the winter time. So we're in that time now where we're getting um, everything, I guess, de-winterized to be ready mm -hmm. for summer and racing season again. Um, we put our schedule together. We've got a crew of about 11 firefighters, EMTs, paramedics that we use at the track. And um, we try and staff five to six people for every event. And um, so I'm working on putting a schedule together for everybody. And then once we arrive at the track on Sundays um, or whenever we're there for an event, we kind of do a bunch of different things. We get all of our corners set up where people are working with our fire extinguishers, oil dry, you know, things we need in our corners. Um, we test all of our equipment, um, our extrication tools, the pump, everything gets tested on the truck to make sure everything's working in case we need it. You know, we like our job, but we hope if we if we stand in one spot all night, I'm completely happy with that if we don't use anything. Absolutely. Um, That's yeah. a good night for sure. Yeah. We've got other some random job duties too. We, we're responsible for putting up the flags on the flagpole for every event and hooking up the track lights, the, the caution lights and things like that for every event. And we we have lots of things we do that people don't realize. So, um, and then we kind of just wander around, take a lap around, see if anybody needs anything, questions, comments, concerns from drivers and um, I think a lot of our drivers like that, that we've got that presence there, that they know they can come approach us and talk to us. Um, and, you know, we're open to, you know, suggestions, comments, things like that. Yeah. There has to be good working relationships at every track. And some are better than others about that. But, you know, between the drivers, the staff, the owner, the flagmen, all of those. And, and the people that come to the races don't necessarily even think about how all that works and, and what it needs. Like what, like you said, you put the flag up. Who comes to the track and wonders, now I wonder who put the flag up, <laughs> you <Yeah>. know? <laughs> but, but if it wasn't there, then somebody would say, well, where's the flag? Correct. And so, yeah. you know, um, we have to often kind of step back and think about who and what are, are being done behind the scenes that gives us the opportunity to have a, a night of entertainment at the racetrack and one that's safe and safe for the drivers. And I know things happen and nine times out of 10, it's, it's an accident and nobody means to get into anybody and hurt anybody, but your job is to be there. And really it's a comfort thing. I would think, for, for the race car drivers, their teams to know that there's a corner worker that, that'll be right there. There's a safety truck. You have a good safety program. I know uh, from reputation set in place. And don't you think it gives everybody kind of a sense of comfort? Yeah, I do. And, and like I said, we've got a lot of people that are very complimentary on the job we do. You know, we're all passionate about it. We put time into training and practicing and you know drivers practice and so do we you know we um we put the time into to make sure that we're doing everything the right way but we've had uh over the years a couple family members i, I believe one time it was a mother i think another time it was a spouse have come up to us and said like i only let my husband my boyfriend my whatever race here because you guys are here we've mm -hmm. gone to other tracks they don't have such a good program and that's why I let them come race here at Slinger because they're, they know that we're passionate about it and mm -hmm. we're, we're there right away for them when they need us. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, um, it can be people in the stands too. You know, you have a really hot night in Wisconsin and, and uh, the races are going on and you're there to help out anybody at the track. It isn't just the drivers. It's yeah. it's uh, people in the pits, people in the stands, et cetera. So um, it's a comfort level, I think, for everybody. Yeah. We had the opportunity to host the SRX race back in 2021, and it uh -huh. was a July day, and it's very hot and humid in Wisconsin in, in that time of year. And um, we were busier uh, you know, kind of in between all the events with people in the stands having heat issues, then uh -huh. we were busier doing anything else that day. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm sure of that. And, you know, same for Michigan, we get hot, humid and, 
And sometimes I'm sure that would be true. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. So what, what is it about your job? I would say that you enjoy the most. For me, it was like a great way to bring together two of my passions. I love being a firefighter and a paramedic at the fire department and I loved racing and it was just this perfect kind of mesh together of what I like doing. And, um, you know, you got to watch the races for free and mm -hmm. like, you know, be there to watch everything. But I just like being able to be there to help the people. And I, not to say anything bad about other places, but sometimes safety programs at tracks aren't the best and they need some improvement. And to me, it's, you know, these are our drivers that we're taking care of or making sure that they're good. And, you know, we, we have other tracks reach out to us too. And, ask about our protocols and our procedures and stuff and we're more than happy to share that information to help other places too and that mm -hmm. kind of has been something that's brought some joy to me over the last few years too is being able to help other places too yeah for sure i you know i live in kalamazoo michigan and kalamazoo speedway track safety team is very well known for um their excellence on the track and off too just like you guys and i know that they um have people from other tracks that reach out to them and and ask them for help and and same as you do and so once a, a track becomes known for having a high quality safety team and and that then I think they become the leaders and, and other track teams look up to them, which is good to know um, and good to have, have that because it's one thing to read in a book about how you do something, you know, as far as your job goes. But when you have the experience and you've been there year after year, the knowledge and the actual hands-on go together. And so then you have a comfort level that maybe somebody at a, another track doesn't. So talking to you probably helps them through some of that. Yeah. And it's in, in every, every track is their own, its own animal, so to speak, you know, at Slinger, it's a quarter mile high banked oval asphalt track. We call it self cleaning. <laughs> so <Yeah>. if something, <laughs> if something happens, it's 33 degrees of banking, which is similar to Daytona's banking, but just smaller. <laughs> yeah. it's, um, if something happens at the top of the track or some debris, most of the time, not all the time, it's rolling to the bottom or the sure. car's sliding to the bottom. And, you know, it's, so we kind of call the self cleaning track that it, mm -hmm. but like someplace that's flat or, you know, flatter, uh, isn't going to be like that. It, it's right. like every track's its own, its it own is. animal to handle. And you, know, you can't necessarily take slinger protocols and how we do things and, you know, copy and paste it exactly to right. a different track because it's not going to work the same way. But to be able to explain why we do things and say, this may work for you, it may not, but maybe we can find a way that works for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's funny, I just interviewed, and uh, let me think who it was. I just talked to somebody, I and the name escapes me now because I've done quite a few recordings in the last couple of weeks, but we were discussing Slinger Speedway. And then, so I had mentioned to them that I had gone there. Um, it's been probably three years ago now. They asked me to come for Women's Motorsports Network. And I had a table set up and was able to share some information about what I was doing in that. And, and so my husband and I came to Wisconsin uh, for a weekend and we came to the races. And, and there's a couple things that I recall from being there. The high banking. Mm -hmm. um, I recall that the cars that were racing were beautiful. Like they were exceptionally nice looking cars. Now, you know, I've been to a lot of racetracks and sometimes you go and you wonder where the heck they got the car. And, <laughs> and then there's <laughs> other times, I mean, like Kalamazoo Speedway, they have wonderful uh, races and the cars are very nice looking as well. But that was just something that really stood out to us. And it wasn't the first night of racing. It was you, they'd been racing a month or six weeks. And so um, I do remember that. I remember that the bleachers where we sat 
honestly could have used a little bit of improvement. <laughs> and I yeah. hope that they've done that since I was there. But the racing was absolutely phenomenal. And yeah. um, we really enjoyed our time there and have talked about, you know, we need to kind of look at the schedule and like to go back there because we like Wisconsin and we'd mm -hmm. like to go back. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's very unique. I mean, I can remember talking with some drivers that have come here. Every July, we have the Slinger Nationals. Mm -hmm. You know, drivers come from all over the country to race at Slinger. Um, and Kyle Busch came for a couple years, and he came, and I've heard this from many other drivers, too, and he's like, I just can't figure out this track. I can't mm -hmm. figure it out. Like they just, And he came back until he won Nationals, and yeah. then he has my back since. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, he a lot of the drivers get frustrated we get drivers that come there that might be a track champion someplace else and they i i don't know how to say it's a nice way but they just don't do well they do yeah. pretty bad and they just it's kind of it's it's very it's a very unique. short track and yeah. it's very banked and yeah. i think that the combination makes it hard if you know they're used to racing at, at their own track that's nothing like that um, it's a good experience for them. Yeah. Um, talking with some of the drivers too, it's like it's almost because of the banking, when they go into the turns, they're kind of going uphill. Or excuse me, when they're coming, going into the turn, they're going like downhill. And then when they're coming out of the turn, they're going uphill. Uh huh. Michael, I think it was Michael Waltrip for the SRX race. He's like, you got to be a billy goat to get around this track. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know what's funny when you say that? It is very hilly. And even on the on the grandstand side, yeah, um, you know the sidewalk and that it's hilly yeah. there. Yeah, and I was surprised at that actually. I um, remember when we were setting up our table and and our um, like oh, the the canopy thing, mm -hmm. trying to find a, a spot that was fairly level was pretty difficult. <laughs> yeah, and I know that's something they want to try and work on is kind of flattening it out. But when they the track originally was a flat quarter mile dirt track. And I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's probably been since the seventies, I want to say that they paved it and they, they dug down to make the banking and then all that dirt just kind of went on the outsides of it. And yeah, they just, it's kind of where it stood. <laughs> right. It and is where it there. is for sure. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, um, and so then you said you also go to the Milwaukee Mile, so that's got to be yeah. a fun place to go. Yeah, it's been, a lot of people think it closed. It's it's still there. Yeah, <laughs> um, it is. 2015, I believe, was the last year they had an IndyCar race in NASCAR. The um, Xfinity Series and the trucks were prior to that, but they stopped coming, but Last year, they got a truck race back, and now uh -huh. this year, we've got a truck race and two IndyCar races, a doubleheader weekend. So, yeah. um, you know, talk about tracks being different. You go from working at Slinger, that's high-banked quarter mile, to a pretty much flat mile track, and yeah, um, that's it's just very different. But it's cool working there, too, because it's the oldest track in the country, and yeah. um, to keep that history going, and... Um, even those years that we didn't have, you know, a big televised race, there was still smaller events going on there. So there's technically been a race there every year. Okay. It just hasn't been on TV. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then it's kind of out of sight, out of mind for people, you know, even like me, I don't live really that far away. But if you don't hear about it mm -hmm. or follow it for some reason, then you kind of forget about it being there. And then last year, uh, I remember when I think it was the trucks that, you said, yeah, the trucks went yep. there. Mm -hmm. And then it was kind of back in the news. It's like, oh, yeah, that's a great place for a yeah. race to take to take place. Um, I I have a good friend whose husband is a track, a track and safety worker, crew person. And he works at Knoxville for okay. um, Knoxville Nationals and all that. And he also works some NASCAR races. Mm -hmm. And so it's been kind of fun to... Ha, you know, talk to him different times about what he has to do, especially where NASCAR is concerned and that. So, um, again, people don't think about um, what it takes for the pe people that are in that role, what it takes for them to be qualified and, 
and dedicated. And on those hot July nights, they're standing at the corner, mm -hmm. hopefully with a little cooler of water, you know. But um, I appreciate all the people that are behind the scenes, I think more so than some, because I interview a lot of them and then I see a lot of them. Uh, yeah. When I'm at the racetrack, I think I notice them more maybe than some others do. So, yeah, um, standing there, we, I mean, both tracks, we wear the same, same suits that the drivers wear. So, yes. you know, they're in their car sweating and we're standing outside sweating. <laughs> yeah. And, and actually they're inside the car where maybe it's shady yeah. or they're at their pit where so it could be it shady. Yeah. And you don't have that luxury, you know, you're yeah. out there in the beating sun uh, the whole time for sure. Yeah. So what yeah. do you think is the hardest thing about um, being a safety worker or about particularly maybe what you do or what your crew does? Well, the heat is one of them, but okay. we find ways to cope with that. You know, standing outside in the heat all day, making sure we stay hydrated. Um, you know, I talk about that, you know, some of those hot days just for the heck of it. We, I weighed myself before and after one day and I sweated out 10 pounds one at an event one day. And I believe uh, that's even with drinking lots of water and stuff. But um, I've got an amazing team of people right now at Slinger that are very willing and eager to help. But um, in the past, it's been hard to find people, to find people that are trained and, you know, able to be there, uh, in the past, we had a core team of people, five or six people that were there every week. And it's just hard to find mm -hmm. somebody that's dedicated to be at a weekly venue like Slinger, yeah. you know, to be there for every week, every Sunday. And it's it's a lot that we give up. You know, it's hard to take a vacation over the summer. If you do, you know, you're leaving yeah. Friday and coming back early Sunday. Um, I'm sure it's even harder for tracks that work or that run on, you know, a Friday or a Saturday night. Yeah. Um, you know, we race Sunday nights between Memorial Day and Labor Day. So at least you get most of your Sunday. But mm -hmm. um, we try to be flexible with, you know, what time people start times and stuff like that to make sure we accommodate that. So staffing has been a problem in the, in the past. But right now we're doing pretty good with that. And um, dealing with the weather, both like preseason oh, yeah. now, we're trying to get everything set up and you know, we're still getting freezing temperatures at night, so mm -hmm. it's hard to get our, 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 we use some fire extinguishers that have water and foam in them that we don't want to put them outside that they're going to freeze. And right. same with the, the pump on the truck and stuff like that. But, um, you know, the people, dealing with people is relatively easy for me, at least. Like I said, we get a lot of respect from the drivers and things like mm -hmm. that. But occasionally you get, um, you get some that, you know, heat of the moment, they wreck their race car and, yeah. you know, you try and give them their space, but sometimes that can be kind of frustrating to deal with, but you kind of, you know, like I said, you wreck your race car, we get it, you're upset, we brush it off, we move on. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's yeah. not personal. Yeah, correct. It's, but just like, come on, really? <laughs> yeah. It feels yeah. personal, yeah. but no, it isn't. It isn't. Yeah, yeah for sure. So, um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, otherwise, it's it's a really, it's an enjoyable, enjoyable job. You know, there's some of the, the hard things to deal with, like I said, the weather and being hot and stuff like that. But the people and being there for the racing, in my mind, makes up for it. Yeah, yeah. And you, you really need to have a passion for racing in order to do a job like that, I think. Or introduce somebody maybe new that's, you know, just gone through the EM course or whatever the requirements are and and introduce them to the world of racing because they may have never thought about how they could help out in that way and um you know people Correct. people yeah. just need to to see what an important job it is and and gosh it would only take one mishap and a safety team not to be there that would Correct. explain to everyone the importance of it for sure now yeah, you was, do oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, that was something I had at some point in time when I was looking to hire people. I had somebody come and they're like, I've never been to a race before. And I said, You have to have at least some interest in learning about racing or like racing, or you're gonna hate this job. Yeah. You're gonna hate standing outside in the sun, you're gonna hate it. You can't 
do it just as like a resume builder or something like that, just no. because you want something to put on your resume. You, you got to have at least an, an interest. Inquiry of interest in something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I was trying to think what I was going to ask you, but I can't Sorry. remember now. So um, <laughs> that's what happens when you get old, Shelly, you know, <laughs> in one ear and out the other. And then I get yeah. interested in hearing what you have to say and, and then prove it's gone. So, yeah, yeah for sure. Um, so what would you say if you um, had to explain to somebody the importance of, you know, in a short thing, in a short little sentence or two, and you went to speak to, let's say, um, a group or something, and explain to them why you're there, um, why this means a lot to you, because it would have to mean a lot for you to be there every Sunday and yeah. have the responsibility to, you know, that you do. So what what is it that keeps you going back there week after week well for me if you know you compare it to like let's just say a car accident on the street you know it's less speed less safety less safety equipment maybe not even wearing your seat belt and you know it's that time that you have to get there you know most res most fire department response times are you know five minutes three to five minutes maybe even a little bit longer and it's probably a less severe of an impact Mm -hmm. when or you know car accident car fire anything like that at the racetrack it happens it's higher speeds more of a dangerous situation the driver is strapped into that car maybe not able to get themselves out to me i have the training and the skills and our team has the skills that we can help them we can be right. there that much quicker i mean sometimes you know maybe going out there too quick before some of the cars are done moving and we're there to help them out. We're yeah. there to, like I said before, those are our drivers. We take passion in keeping them safe and being there to protect them. Yeah. And, you know, we give the drivers their time. You know, like again, it, you, in the streets, you know, it's taken you're, several minutes before you get there. People are then usually up walking around and stuff. We're there right away when it happens. And yeah. they might just need a minute. You sure. Know, like it talked about before too, like the emotions, the emotions run high. Mm -hmm. You're fine. There's no hazards. If you need to take a minute and stay in your car and get your thoughts yeah. back together, then so do it. But it's, it's a passion of mine because I understand where these drivers are coming from uh -huh. and I got the skills that I can be there to help them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's a good feeling when you go home at night. And not that we, you know, are happy when something, you know, happens that you have to deal with. But but yet when you go home at night and and you have had to help some people and you go home feeling like, I'm glad I was there to be able to do that. Um, mm -hmm. It has to make you feel valued and feel like what you do is worthwhile. We know that right. it is. But sometimes i i would guess that you're thinking you know why am i doing this and th that happens and you go home and you think well this is why i do it yeah and honestly i feel like that every spring when it comes to getting stuff set up and ready for the season i'm like oh i hate doing all this stuff and then usually by the first race i'm like okay i'm glad i'm here like it's the the background yeah. stuff isn't always the fun the the most fun part to do but once you're there and yeah even if we don't do anything for the night, even if we, you know, maybe just pick up a little debris here and there and uh -huh. that's all we did. Fine. Yeah. We Fine. made it, we made it a good night. <laughs> yeah. So Shelly, I know tracks require um, the drivers to have safety equipment, different types of things. Are you, um, do you do some kind of inspection to make sure that when the drivers come to race that they have all that or, you know, how does that work? Are there rules about what they have to have in order to race at Slinger? Yeah, so our, our we have track rules for each division that races. And um, each, we actually just went through them last night to update everything again. And uh, each division has what's required based off like the speed and the type of car that's racing. You know, like our super late models are obviously faster, more speed than like our four-cylinder car division. So 
Um, if your super lates are required to have more safety equipment than like our four cylinder cars are, right. uh, they, and also it's, you know, they try and keep the lesser, you know, the, the slower divisions more cost effective. Right. So, you know, there's some things that are mandatory and then there's lots of things that are recommended. Like, we, you know, you're required to have an SFI rated fire suit, a Snell rated helmet, SFI rated gloves, eye protection, but then we're going to recommend that you also maybe have the SFI rated underwear and socks and um, that yeah. you wear like a head sock underneath your helmet. So, mm -hmm. you know, that stuff, uh, we have awesome tech inspectors at the track and they are required to bring their items to tech when they get tech to inspect for their event or for the season. And then we do do periodic checks we try and check everybody when they're going on the track you know obviously we might miss one here and there but um we check as they're going up the track make sure they've got their visor down on the helmets make sure they got their gloves on um you know make sure we can see their seat belts over their shoulders you know yeah. we we check as they go out um but our tech inspectors do a pretty in-depth inspection for them yeah. okay yeah i figured as much and a hans device um, yep, for the faster divisions, yep, they're required to have one, some type of head and neck restraint, correct? Okay. Yeah, I figured, you know, the faster series had different different rules overall. But, you know, um, a friend of mine actually owns a company called Serafina. And okay. she makes, her company makes um, undergarments. And, tea, and some teas and that, but mostly they started with like undergarments and things for um, fire protections, you know. So for race car drivers and, and industrial companies where the workers mm -hmm. would have uh, exposure to a, a fire, that kind of thing. And so um, I, that's the first time I've heard uh, a suggestion by the track for those garments, but there used to not be any. And, and now there's yep. a few companies out there that have come out. Uh, with those kind. And so um, I, I like hearing that that's a suggestion because yeah. again, you know, they think it's never going to happen to them. Correct. And so, um, and then it, it only takes once and, and then they're sorry. So I'm yeah. glad to hear that that's one of the things that you suggest for sure. Yeah. And it just adds in extra time. So the SFI rating for the fire suits, you know, goes up, the, the minimum rating, I have to look at the chart again, but it's only like five or 10 seconds of flame contact. It's protecting oh, yeah. it for, it's very oh, minimal yeah. mm -hmm. and, and it goes up from there. Uh, yeah. But that extra undergarment adds like an extra five seconds for you. So if that's, and that doesn't sound like a long time, but like you said, you guys are going to be right there yep. with the fire singer. So, so really, the difference between five seconds and 10 seconds is really quite a bit of difference of time. Yeah. And if you have that extra protection underneath for sure, then, um, you know, it's just one more layer of safety. Um, mm -hmm. I, I can remember when my granddaughters raced quarter midgets, my one granddaughter was racing and her quarter midget caught on fire, but it was behind her yeah. and she didn't realize it was on fire. And of course, her dad was the first one out on the track, you know, but um, I just think how quick it can happen mm -hmm. and, and not just to adults, yeah, to, to any age of, of driver. So um, yeah, we have to think about all those things and, and parents need to be aware and need to think about those things too, when it's Correct. their kids out there driving. Yeah. And um, like I said earlier, my boyfriend drag races and, I yeah. joke around that he needs to do fire drills and practice getting in and out of the car yeah. fast. And, you know, you got to be able to, to do that quickly. And even oh, yeah. I've told people even like blindfolded or with your eyes closed that you can't mm -hmm. see your clasp for your seatbelt. You can't right. see, you can't see your, your window net clasp, but you can yeah. do that stuff if it's smoky in the car and you can't get out. And so yeah, do some fire drills. <laughs> Absolutely. I know uh, a couple of years ago, Carson Hosabar, who's from Portage, Michigan, mm -hmm. which is Kalamazoo and Portage, just run into each other. He, um, you know, he broke his leg, broke his ankle or his foot, his leg, whatever it was at uh, Gateway. 
And I know that before they let him get back in the race car, that's something he had to get get out of the car within a certain length, so many seconds before yeah. they would let him go back to race. And it wasn't his foot. It was more, can he get in and out? Correct. Or get out. And so um, really everybody should practice that. Um, I'm going to remind my granddaughter who races, her and her boyfriend, um, they're going to have to do that for Mammon. And yep. let's see how fast she can get out of the car because yep. we just don't think about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you talk more of like a structure fire, like a house or a building, the fire doubles in size. Uh -huh. Like every, I think it's five seconds. It's, 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 it's quick. So I yeah. mean, it's going to be even faster than that with the race car, with the fuel sure. and things like that. So yeah, it's fast. Um, but yeah, fire drills are good. You know, just being very familiar with, putting that stuff on and off and getting in and out of the car and yeah. even getting, if you're not somebody who normally gets in and out of your car with your helmet on to practice doing that. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think Carson raced at Slinger Nationals the year that he has broken leg. In oh yeah. Number. I think he might have. Yeah. Yeah. I saw him with the crutches and I went over and stopped over there and I was like, what's like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. And and that's and that's something I encourage anybody to to do. If you have an injury or you're not feeling well or something's not right, to talk with your safety team and let them know. Um mm -hmm. I just had somebody come up to me. We had a registration day a couple weeks ago. Hey, I had rotator cuff surgery, but I'm not racing until I'm cleared, which probably is going to be June or July, but just wanted to let you know and I said, "Well, just remind me, you know, mm -hmm. just give us a reminder that you know, which shoulder is it in case we have to help you out of the car? Like, yeah. Not yanking on it. Right. Um, you know, we had, we've had people who've had their appendix out or, you know, anything like that, that just, just give us a heads up, let us know. Yeah. And we're not going to go and blab it to everybody. You know, we try and follow HIPAA rules the best we can, Sure. you know, but uh, just let us know. So we know what's going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just had replacement surgery about, let's see, it'll be five weeks on Tuesday. And of course I couldn't drive. That was my right knee. Mm -hmm. And so at, at physical therapy on uh, Wednesday of this week, I said, well, how long till I can drive and, mm -hmm. and who decides if I can drive? And the, my PT guy said, well, I do. And, <laughs> and so he said, Melinda, you could have been driving for, you know, over a week. I've seen you in here. I just assumed you were driving. I said, no, my husband keeps bringing me and he'd like to not have to do that. He doesn't and want to be so, a chauffeur anymore. Yeah, he would like to have that hour that he has to sit there, you know, for something else. But, um, you know, uh, so, so yeah, anything like along those lines, um, the more information the safety team has, I think the better for helping that person, um, regardless. And, yeah. and, you know, there's things that happen in the pits. There's things, it's not always on the track and, and oh, so yeah, it's, for sure. it's nice to know what's, what's kind of going on around you. Yeah. We had a, um, a family member of a driver who actually uh, stopped breathing and didn't have a pulse in the pits. And we actually, we, we saved him. We got wow. him back. And, but that's another thing. Like if we went to Ben there, you know, yeah. we don't know if that would have made it, you know, obviously would have made a difference, but um, yeah, yeah, we, he wow. was back at the track the next Sunday and yeah, and that's something, but yeah, yeah, that's the other thing too, is just we injuries in the pit sometimes are worse than sometimes things on the track. And yeah, and well, a car comes, you know, barreling in off, off the race and has to fix a flat tire and people aren't expecting it and they're not watching and, you know, so easily they could get hit or something happen. And so, um, there's a lot of danger when you think about it around racing. Yeah. And yet you could drive out to the end of my street right here and, mm -hmm. and get hit by somebody coming down from the other way because they just drive like bats out of hell on my road out here. And so, you know, we just all have to really be cautious, take, take our time in what we're doing, be aware of our surroundings, and then be thankful that the safety team is there. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Well, Shelly, I've really enjoyed talking to you. I hope I can get back to summer this summer sometime. I'd love yeah. to come to the Nationals. That yes, would be so sure. fun. Yeah, um, I, pulled it up. I pulled it up here. Well, just it's July 9th this year. Okay. 
All right. Yeah. I'm going to write that down right now. That would be a nice little weekend vacation for my husband and I, for sure. Yeah. So they we race Sunday, like they call prelude to the nationals. And then Monday is uh, all day practice. And then Tuesday is the nationals. Okay. So Sunday yeah. to Tuesday. And, you know, we're, we're retired other than self-employed. So yeah. we can make that happen for sure. Yeah. Well, there was one other thing. I, I Go had ahead. I was going to ask you if there yeah. was anything else you wanted to share. Well, there was, when I had a chance to meet you down at PRI in December, you yeah. brought up that our, our track announcer has claimed that I'm the first female safety director in the country. Really? And he said he's going to, he's going to claim that until somebody proves him wrong. So, okay. and I would, I would like to know too. So I guess if anybody out there knows of any other female safety directors in the country, I'd like to meet them. Well, I'm going to put that out there as well. Um, and see what we can find out. I just uh, talked to a gal who is um, a race director, and okay. you don't hear about very many female race directors either. Correct. Yep. Uh, I know there are probably a couple. I think I know of a couple others, but I don't know of any other safety director. Okay. So I will put that out there, and we will see what we can find out, Shelly. Sounds good. All right. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you being on the show today. Yeah, um, thank you. I'm, I'm going to close out this portion, but please uh, stick around for a couple minutes. Okay. Um, and then we'll uh, talk, talk to you here in just a second. Okay. Thanks. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Women's Motorsports Network podcast. Subscribe to my show and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube. If you or someone you know would like to be featured in the Women's Motorsports Network news online magazine, this podcast, or Let's Talk Racing Live, my social media show, contact me via Messenger on Facebook at Melinda Russell or send me an email at womensmotorsportsnetwork at gmail.com. 